were you offended by what the Eagles did in pulling Jalen Hurts in a one-score game? Sure. I, I think every everyone that actually played uh, or, or is currently playing in the game um, are, are somewhat offended by that. Um, and, and let me just preface this because I know we're going to go back to uh, the Giants. So let me just preface this by saying this has nothing to do with um, – the Giants being eliminated by uh, the Eagles losing this game. The Giants had plenty of opportunities during the course of the year to control their destiny, and they didn't. So uh, whatever happened in Philadelphia happened, and the Giants have to live with it. So that that doesn't factor into um, what my feelings are on this. Um, you know, and I, I heard you guys discuss it, and, and you were saying that um, – the Philadelphia's owe the uh, Giants nothing, and uh, they did what they thought was best. Um, and I, I, I tend to disagree with that. Be, you know, for the layperson, and this is not directed at you, Maggie, but just in general, mm-hmm. the layperson can look at this and rationalize it in a lot of different ways. And they can say it was about a draft pick. They can say it was about not getting someone hurt. The reality is this: I've, the, the players were not uh, clued in on this this strategy. They go out to play to win every game, and you put you know eleven guys on the field. They go bust their humps. They're competing, and when you start to see these questionable things, and when you're within three points of winning a game, and then you put the other guy in, like it's senior day, it's not a blowout, right? So it's not like you're getting blown out or you're blowing the other team out and now it's time to clear the bench with the guys who never got a chance to play. That's not how it works. These guys get paid for a living. And, you know, when you do that and you, you're saying you want to see what, what uh, the other guy can do, they know what he can do. They see him every day in practice. There's a reason why he was a third-string quarterback. He's not in competition to be a starter next year. It's Jalen Hurts. And the only thing he's in competition to be is a backup. So that's evaluated during the course of training camps and in practice. So to take your your best chance to win a football game in Jalen Hurts out with three points uh, with a three-point deficit, it rubs your players the wrong way. And then, you know, you guys say, well, maybe, you know, this was an organizational call, and they, you know, and, and, and Doug Peterson is collaborative in that way. Well, here's the thing about that organization. There's a thing called culture, right? And when you start to uh, erode the integrity and the trust that you ask your players to have in you as an organization, then all of those calls you're making will not give you any equity within that locker room because those guys go out and they play very hard and to, uh, to do what you did and they're fighting their butts off because, you know, they may have a losing season, but they're not, and they're playing. They're playing a division rival. Right. They don't want to get beat by those guys. You know, they want to. They want to send a message that says, "Okay, we might be down this year, but we're going to punch you in the mouth." And it's just, it, you know, for the the lay people out there, and you 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 can make a you can create a lot of scenarios, and you may not be wrong, but if you don't factor in the men that play this game and that care about it on a week-to-week basis, then you've left out the most important part of your analysis. Because those guys, if you're not telling them what what you're doing and they're buying into this, then you, the integrity of what you do, what you consider yourself to be, is shot. It just is. I mean, yeah, they say, well, it's a billion-dollar organization, and they make these, these decisions above the heads of the players. 
Well, yeah, you can, they can do whatever they want because they own the team. And if it was a collaborative effort from management down, that, that down stopped at the head coach because the players were not um, clued in on that. And you just destroyed the culture of your team. If nothing else, you just eroded the trust that the players had in you. When you stand up and say, go fight, go bust your butt, and then you start to pull these, these, these questionable types of moves, then these players are like, yo, man, what's up? Why, why do I want to play for you? Carl, you know, I totally I, I understand get, it. And I think that I'm, – I'm sorry to interrupt. I know that Doug Peterson, he's got to deal with this now with those veterans in the locker room. No doubt about it. He has to answer to them and them alone. He doesn't really have to answer to us, but he does have to answer to them. But can I play devil's advocate for a moment just using something sure. that could have happened with the Giants last year? So say last year in the Chase Young Bowl, quote-unquote, if the Giants – you know the players are always going to try to win. We know that. But say the Giants yep. organizationally had decided to rest half of their starters because that was a meaningful – game at the point anyway for the Giants meaningless I mean by the standings by the standings not by you know player Mm -hmm. integrity but by the standings that was meaningless for the Giants and if they had lost that game but benched half the starters in like a rather transparent move to get Chase Young but bottom line Chase Young was in a Giants uniform this year playing the way he's playing with Washington do you think that would have an adverse effect on the Giants culture no but you're you what you're doing. And, well, here's here's two things. I don't think it has an adverse effect because the subtlety of you know is you're resting players and you're you know uh, deciding well this is it. Everybody knows what's going on. The players, uh, the coaches, management. Right? We're not getting guys hurt, but I still expect the guys out there to go out and play hard. Sure. Right? Um, but here's the thing. If you're going to, if, 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 and the reality is this, and I think um, Jason Kelsey said it best on a, he had a, a video out a week ago. That one player, though dynamic he may be, Washington lost twice to the Giants this year. So that one player doesn't take you to the Super Bowl. It helps build your team sure, sure. without a doubt. Without a doubt. But if you're not there, yeah, you'll get a good player. Um, and he's a di- – don't get me wrong. He's a dynamic player, and he's going to be disruptive in this league for a long time. But there are a lot of other ones that are out there. But the subtlety of maneuvering, let's just say, okay. for lack of a, a, yeah. a more – That's know, a good euphemism maneuvering, for maneuvering, not taking, thing. yes. <laughs> right. Well, the, maneuvering. Well, yeah. As opposed to what different. they did, yeah. Well, it was well, egregious right, last night. No one will argue that. It was egregious. It was, well, they resting still players the players is different than taking a guy out and putting somebody Correct. in that's non-competitive. You go because in and you knew Fletcher Cox knows. was not playing. You knew Miles Sanders was not playing. You knew Dallas Goddard was not playing. They were resting starters all over the place. But when you take Jalen Hurts out of a three-point game in the fourth quarter and put Nate Sudfeld in the game – and then talk about evaluation, right. or he's been here for four years, he deserves some snaps in a game no, that he has doesn't. meaning. Yeah, exactly, he doesn't. No, he's he doesn't. terrible. He gets a check. He gets a check every week. <laughs> he didn't, this is not, and, and see, this is the thing where he can sell that to the general public and play on the sympathies of, oh, here's a guy who works very hard in practice. You're a backup quarterback. You're expected to work hard and practice and to be ready. But you do not deserve in a, in a three-point game to say, okay, my be- I'm going to take my best chance of winning out of the game, and I'm going to put you in, and everybody on the field, the, uh, the other ten guys that practice with you every single day know that you're not better. But I'm going to put you in and just pull the rug from under these players who are giving their everything. It's just, it, you know, it, it, it sends the wrong message to your players, and it's a rotten thing to do. And, again, anyone who wants to look at it in terms of, well, they're maneuvering up three spots in the draft, they don't even know who they're going to draft. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, Carl, don't, the draft boards aren't even set. You know what I mean? So, um if you're the coach and you're going to be returning next year and Jalen Hurts is your quarterback, 
what do you think he's thinking of you right now? No, I get it. He's going to think I... he can't trust you. And now, because Carson Wentz can't trust him and whatever their thing is, and, and Wentz made his own bed, right? But now the narrative changes for the next guy. Because it's like, well, I can't trust this guy either. We were, you know, I, I, give us the best chance to win, and you pulled me out to put this clown in. Carl, it's, it's a different dynamic at the left at the um at the player level. That's that's pretty much what you know, it is. And, and Carl, yeah. you're right. And, no, and for the NFL, totally no, you're point. you're dead on correct. And, and listen, for the NFL, it's something that the the stench is there that that does need to be addressed. I know there, I know other teams have done it before, but you know your buddy Seth Joyner, you know, he, after the game on TV last night, said he was embarrassed to be associated with the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, that says it all right there. Don't take my word for it. Take, for, take it from a guy who, who had no no stake in, in, in this game other than rooting for his team, but he played his heart out every week, and he would never go for that. That's you know that's the thing about it, folks. It's when players are playing this game, they give everything they have. You're expecting them to go out and do that, but don't give them the worst chance to win when victory is within sight. It's just, it, it's, it's wrong. It's, you know, and like I said, he can rationalize it and, you know, to the lay person, they can, you know, they can say, well, yeah, I see his point. Well, yeah, I see his point. Well, the players don't because they're asked to go out there and bust their humps. And, you know, you got to say to the players, look, we got, we're going to move up three spots in the draft. And, um, <laughs> you know, I'm going to put this guy in to make sure we do. Well, you don't even know what you're drafting, but the players don't want to hear that. They, you ask them to go out and play their hearts out, and you know you put their best chance to win with, with, uh, down by three points, and it, it sucks. It sucks if you are a person that's been in a locker room on the field and you've been competing. You always give your team the best chance to win, and if you're going to be, you know, subtle about it then do your subtleties in the play calling, like not going for three and going for a touchdown, right? Because right. you can, as a coach, you can say, listen, hey, I thought, you know, we needed the points because it was going to be a game that's going to be tough, so we wanted to get more points, whatever. You know, we, we, we know how teams maneuver subtleties to, to do these things, but this is, I, I don't want to call it a dereliction of duty, but it's, it's the worst thing that you can do as a coach because your players, they'll never trust you. And you talk about the veterans. Well, the young guy, the, the guy you're grooming to be your starting quarterback, he ain't going to trust you either. Not with that move. Yeah, we He's going to always think there's an ulterior motive. 